Let's think of patterns. Some patterns stand out more than others. We've got a triangle and a circle repeating. So we need to continue this. So we'll put a circle and then a triangle. With numbers like this, we look at how they change. So this pattern has our numbers increasing by two. Sometimes it could be decreasing, but these are increasing by two. So to continue the pattern, 13 plus two is 15, plus two is 17, plus two is 19. But what happens when we have something that might have fractions? Oh, we might need to do a little bit more digging. Even this one may not look like fractions, but it's actually got a fraction pattern. Let's think about what's the same between each group of circles. Each group has four rows of four circles. So that's common among them all. Four rows of four circles. But what's different? And the thing is with fractions, we have a common denominator quite often. So each of these have four rows of four circles. So that's our common part. What changes is the number of shaded circles. So if we were thinking of the pattern, there's one row out of four that's shaded. Then we've got two rows shaded out of our four rows. Then we've got three rows shaded out of four rows. So what would come next? Well, since we've increased by one each time, we went from one to two, then two to three. Three plus one means four rows are shaded out of our four rows. So that's what it would look like. So think of one out of four, two out of four, three out of four, four out of four. And let's join it together with fractions. If we have this to solve and we needed to write what comes next, we've got fractions, but we've also got our pictures to help us. We've got one row shaded out of four, which is one out of four or one quarter. Then we go to two out of four. So we've got two on the top of our fraction out of four. Four is our common denominator because all these pictures have four rows of four, three shaded rows out of four. So our final picture will have four rows out of four, but our fraction will be four quarters. So each time, the common denominator is four, and that's what was common about our pictures. We had four rows of four each time. So you see, there's our fraction with our picture together. Now let's just look at fractions on their own. We've got nine tenths, seven tenths, and five tenths. Now the first thing you might notice is that it's fractions, but I hope you notice that we've got the number 10 at the bottom of all of them. It's a common denominator. So since we're working with tenths, let's think of a number line to help us. We've got a number line and we've got tenths here. So let's label that from zero to one with tenths for each of the ticks. Our first number is nine tenths. So remember, the thing that's changing is the numerator, the number on the top of our fraction. We've got nine tenths. So if we put a little ball where nine tenths is, then look at our next number. It's seven tenths, so it's decreasing. So we're subtracting something. We're actually subtracting two tenths to get to seven tenths. And then we go to five tenths. Now that means we've jumped to the left another two tenths. So we're decreasing by two tenths. So our next number is going to be the same. We're going to decrease by two tenths. 5 minus 2 is 3, so we have 3 tenths. And our final number in the pattern, we're going to decrease by 2 tenths again, and we have 1 tenth. So the number line is one way of looking at it, and thinking of the numerator is the other, because our common denominator of 10 didn't change.